And let's get right to it and take a deeper dive on this looming crisis with immigration attorney Esther Valdez Clayton. Esther, thank you so much uh, for joining us. You heard uh, Dan Plant's report. I, and, uh, he says that Joe Biden has opened the welcome mat, and if it's not him, it's the cartels creating misinformation. Your thoughts on that? Again, this is policy that has drastically changed between the Trump administration just two years ago to the current Biden administration. Again, the policy is the driver here. The laws have not changed. Title 42, a COVID pandemic regulation is about to go away on midnight on Thursday. That regulation stopped migrants from entering, claiming asylum. They were rapidly expelled and returned to remain in Mexico. What is now going to change is what the law has been for the last 26 years, meaning that if you try to enter unlawfully into the United States, you will be detained, you will be punished with a, a with a, an order for removal for five to 10 years blocking you from the United States. The loophole is asylum, and that's what's driving all of the misinformation. Sadly, a lot of the migrants that we just saw are being misinformed by cartels in social media, on Facebook, stating if you claim asylum and you tell them you fear for your life, you can enter the United States. If you're a female, you won't be detained. You'll be allowed to stay in the United States while your immigration court case is being heard, which could be anywhere from four to seven years in some jurisdictions. And again, the asylum system is not designed for the vast majority of migrants, which ICE just tweeted out. You can verify this on ICE.gov. They tweeted out two days ago saying the majority of these migrants, sadly, are economic migrants. Our asylum system is not for poverty. It's for people fleeing totalitarian regimes where you will be persecuted, tortured on account of your race, your religion, your national origin, or a particular social group or your political opinion. Poverty is not a driver. And sadly, many, the majority of these migrants are going to find that out once they try to enter unlawfully into the United States, they will be returned and or deported after removal proceedings. So what's going to happen, Esther, when Title 42 expires? The, 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 the idea is that, like you said, uh, I claim asylum. OK, great. Come on in. Here you go. We're going to drop you off at a transit center. You're saying that's not going to happen. It doesn't necessarily will happen for women and children and family units as well or unaccompanied children. They will be paroled into the United States, parole being different from the criminal system. Parole meaning on a humanitarian grounds, we will allow you access and we won't detain you. That's another huge driver of the thousands. Some estimates are reporting via drone and surveillance footage that more than between 100,000 to 700,000 migrants will try to enter through the border come midnight on uh, May 11th. So the border patrol agents are telling us we not only cannot handle this logistically, administratively, or procedurally, but the National Guard is simply there to help manage and orchestrate and facilitate this mass influx. And that's what's inherently different about the Biden administration. They by no means are trying to deter or detain people. They're trying to facilitate this to be orderly so that the cartels don't exploit the migrants and try to get tens of thousands of dollars for some who have traveled all the way from Africa, from Asia, where the cost of smuggling them is in the tens of thousands. The Central Americans generally pay between seven to $12,000 and they're forced into labor and servitude. And that's the huge underbelly of this. Even though we as San Diegans, we wanna be compassionate, we wanna give water, we're beyond that at this point. We have localities that are calling for state of emergency in Texas because they don't, they can't house them, they can't transport them, they can't provide the medical care. It's a true humanitarian emergency Emergency. But not only that, but in terms of national policy, national security risks, not only in terms of our border, but who we are apprehending. There's so many people we don't even know because they're getting away from and they're eluding capture at the border. And that's the biggest worry of all that should keep our local and state and federal politicians up at night. This border chaos will cause harm to our national security not to mention our national sovereignty. If you can no longer defend your border, are you really a nation at that point? Well, Esther Valdez Clayton, I could talk with you about this for a lot longer. You're always very insightful, but we have run out of time. We really appreciate you coming on and hopefully the leaders are listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.